Formula One returns to Canada for the first round of the 2020 season here at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve. After the, the back of pre-season testing, this race will be the first chance to see the true pecking order of the cars. Whereas Red Bull and Toyota look to be the most consistent throughout testing. Whereas Daniel Caviello set the fastest lap of the overall test. So those three teams will be looking to battle it out for supremacy, much like they were towards the end of the 2019 season. Also in the midfield pack, this looks to be closer than ever. And you've got all those other teams just behind the front runners looking for supremacy. And straight out of the block, Aston Martin looking to utilise their low drag setup. Of course, building their car around the philosophy of the 2019 Toyota, which was incredibly low drag. Second, Gilles Villeneuve looks to play for the strengths of the car, with Perez and Stroll both with points on the agenda. It's also, also much the same at Alfa Romeo, but their car also being considered low drag compared to that of the, fr of the front running teams. And the team with Magnussen and Tiro had points high on also on their agenda. And then no one could get close to the Toyotas throughout any of the practice sessions, with Massa Sheet and Hamilton easily dominant with a full 5 tenth gap even back to the next fastest car and will look to dominate here at the Canadian Grand Prix. Hey guys, Renault here. Welcome back to Formula One. It's been a long time since I could say that, so it's been a long time since I commentated a video, so uh, apologies if I'm a bit rusty for this one, but it's been oh, four months, maybe even five, since I last commentated something. Here we are then, on the lining up now, on the grid, for the first round of the 2020 season. You get a first look there of the grid. Now we've got here, we've got a look at Lars Stroll down in P17. And the car is definitely faster around this circuit at least than, than 17th place would suggest. And taking a look here at the starting grid, you get a first look here at the grid. And everyone's playing on soft tyres. And it's Hamilton who takes the first pole of the season. And now the three points that come with taking pole position. And so Toyota front row lockout with Matashita in second. Kvyat showing Mercedes has pace lining up in P3. With our teammate K-Mag starting from fourth. With Verstappen P5 and Russell in Yudhemberg starting from P6. Perez with a great qualifying start from 7th place in the Aston Martin in their first race. Ahead of the Red Bull of, Ma of uh, Max Verstappen. With ourselves in 9th and Hulkenberg rounding off the top 10. We've got Harry Anton Vessel just missing out on Q3 but starting from inside the points positions. With Leclerc in P13 ahead of defending world champion Mick Schumacher. We really didn't get it together, but Tufello is still ahead of his new teammate Nicholas Latifi and the other Williams. We've got Gasly 16th in the Alphatari ahead of Lars Stroll as we saw on the grid. With Sergio Sita Cameron making his F1 debut from P18 on the grid. Alex Albon in the other Red Bull, nightmare session for him, had problems all throughout qualifying, only starting from P19 out in Q1. And same also Fernando Norris, both of them really not getting it to grips with this qualifying so far. Now looking on to us though, we're starting from P9, so inside the points places, which is where you want to be in the Alpha May. You want to build off last season where, of course, albeit a shortened season, we won the season finale with K-Mag at Monaco. And let's try and get a, a legitimate win early on the season. But now coming to the five red lights for the start of the 2020 season. Lights out, and away we go. It's going to be a pretty even start there from the front row between the two Toyotas. And the Fries looking to make moves further behind. And because we missed one round, we missed one round, we take one of the Fries with us. Well, that five seconds into the new season, and we're already facing the wrong way. There'll be mayhem there into turn one as well. There's cars stopping all over the place. I don't know if anyone else has been involved, but now we've had ourselves in the pit lane. The safety cars come out as well. The Fries are going to take away round here, round. Yeah, the plane, you know, got the safety car there right behind us. We just managed to uh, make our way through all the carnies. What the hell happened there? I mean, we got taken out by a Ferrari immediately, and about five or six of the cars just stopped into turn one. So now we've got no front wings, we have to make a pissed off. And we get somebody in kind of with the McLaren hanging his head, so we just get speared across the track. And Charles Leclerc was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Nice dive from Albon there, still making up three or four places. And then we just get a massive load of congestion of them just getting stolen into turn one. Maybe a bit of debris making its way down to turn one, catching a few cars out. Maybe a few, a few punctures on that. And see the cars are all over the grass. So something, somewhere has gone massively wrong in the, uh, the, the front pack of cars. This is it now from the class perspective. It's going to turn one of business and just managed, it just clears us there. Just didn't quite manage the gap to get through. Of course, you can't slam on the brakes. You've got cars behind, so you kind of have to go for the gap. But it's still the, uh, the Toyota the lead, ahead of uh, K Mag, then one of the Mercs, and then Sergio Perez up in P5 on Aston Martin's debut race. Well, so basically, it's the car that Haas would have had, it's the chassis that Haas would have had. I don't know about what the car, anyway, they built it around the Toyota, so they've built it around a good car, but maybe not so good a chassis. So, on to the end of that first lap, we've of course had to come into the pits for a new front wing. 
and I imagine that the cloud didn't say no the cloud actually got away without any damage so uh, the monogas there getting pretty lucky and we're going to go into a set of medium tyres now and we're going to do the it's an effective one stop still but now we're going to run run along here on mediums and if you can go long enough maybe you can go into a set of soft later on we also got one of the Williams there of Mick Schumacher must have got caught so that's, that, I think that explains the traffic down some, some debris must have made its way down and, and then give uh, the defending world champion some damage so ourselves 2016 champion actually with the throw did come in and then actually the Clyde pitted but either way so us three now three big names ourselves Shimi and the Claire all at the back of the grid now and we've come now to the uh, starting order we've got the two choices that lead the way as we saw ahead of K-Mag and the lead of the Mercs and then Sergio Perez doing an absolute madness so those him in like two or three laps of the race but Aston Martin the highest finish in F1 history is P6 if, if they can repeat that, then that'll be a, a mighty achievement this season. We've got to look at the rest of the cars. They're snaking their way down the grid. We've got the lead runner there. We actually have Stroll. Where is Stroll come from? He's not even P17. He's up in like 7th or 8th position. So a, a lightning start there from the Canadian. Of course, like his home track going to do well. And then we've got the two Rebels finding themselves together. So Alvin also made a good start to this race as well. Then we have the lead of the Alpha Tauris, which is Sergio's head to camera. Then Latifi, his ex Dam's teammate from F2. Well, then by the lead McLaren of Harry Anto, and then Pierre Gasly in the second of the Alfa Tauris, and then Lando Norris in the second of the McLarens. And then we have Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari, and then still trying to catch up to the pack of ourselves, and Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. And right at the back currently is Mick Schumacher in the, the uh, Williams Honda, of course, not BMW anymore with BMW leaving at the end of last season. But now they're coming on to the restart now of the Canadian Grand Prix. I mean, did we even have a safety car last season? I'm not even sure if we did. I think we may have had one or two. But anyway, we've got a safety car now within the first minute of the new season. And as it's going to be up now to Hamilton to decide when we bolt now because he's effectively become the safety car. He can bolt anywhere down this street or he can wait to the final corner if he wants. He's taking it nice and slow, very slow actually, down this straight. It's all got the safety car board flashing because with the new rule for this season also you can't overtake until you get to the safety car to the start finish line actually instead of the safety car line and uh, Hamilton bolts now we come now into the final corner and make our way through there so everyone's going to get through the wall of champions because on Coltai it's going to be a uh, prime time just to smash into the wall and take yourself out of the race so it's Hamilton now that leads us back to green flag racing with his teammate Matt Sashita right up behind him in second and then we pulled a bit of a gap to K-Max and K-Max really uh, caught napping off the restart I mean, his race pace has been pretty good from last season. He's, he's, his qualifying pace is where he's, he's been needing to work on. He's got a good qualifying so far. In P3 on the podium for Alfa Romeo. I'd, I'd uh, definitely take a podium for either of us in this first race here. Now, looking back down towards the other end of the grid, uh, as you can see now, it's actually now starting to rain slightly. See the few drops there on the camera. So, rain, yeah, every, it's all just kicking off here now in round one. Safety car immediately now. The rain's starting to come down as well. It's not going to be time yet for the. Uh, it's really tight, it's an just side range, you know, the couple of laps at least, depending on how heavy the rain starts to come down. Now you've got the Ferrari's looking to make a charge back through the field now. We've got to go defending there from Charlotte Clare, we've got that Ferrari engine turned up to the maximum. All three of us are on the set of medium tyres, so at the minute, as it stands, we're not going to have the tyre back here, but Charlotte Clare's on an absolute mission now. They're trying to make a move past us now into the heavy and going side by side, and he actually clears there, massively late on the brakes. And you've got his teammate Sebastian Vettel, the five time Drivers' World Champion, makes a move there around Lando Norris in the McLaren and makes it stick as well. And McLaren not looking so good so far. I mean, it's brilliant off where they had, I think they had, a, they had a stable last season. They're probably lucky to put off that. I mean, nowhere near challenging the front runners at the minute, at least anyway. McLaren is going to be the Spastic Vettel. McLaren, man on a mission, and send it on the inside line. Spastic Vettel side by side, almost caught out between the teammates, but they just, just about managed to give them each other enough room. And they keep it side by side now through. Down the run now into turn one. Vettel on the inside of the wheel, the inside line of Norris, because Norris got slowed down. And all that, oh, the Fries keep it side by side. We just have to back out there behind Norris. Now we've got Mick Schumacher looking to make a move on us once again, we just managed to hold him off here. So the Ferrari is still going side by side. These are lying in the good on the inside line here through the chicane. And you're going to squeeze out towards the one and just has to back out of that move. But the chicane sometimes now he just has to slot back in there behind Charles Leclerc. The two Ferraris, th what, three or four laps into this season, already going out. We've got Schumi looking to look for a way around our outside now. We just managed to squeeze out the, uh, the defending world champion. He's not going to be defending much here, currently in the last position. I mean, the uh, Williams car looked to be looked decent over testing. Not the uh, the fastest thing at all. It showed glimmers of pace. It's definitely not definitely not the last place car on the grid. I think Latifi's a bit further up the order. Of course, going to be going to be doing good in his debut in F1. Also at his home Grand Prix, so there's going to be pressure there on the Canadian. Of course, he finished. I think he finished second here in F2 last in uh, yeah last season to his teammate 
Sergio is set to camera, so he's going to want to look to get one up here on his teammate here. Now, two fries once again going at it. Vettel now trying to look to go around the outside line here. Are his teammate going to squeeze him out? No, he just has to do a nice training there from Charles Leclerc, because he's on. Eventually, his tyres are going to become the fresher ones, even though he's on the harder compound. Now then, we're still all over the back now. Lando Norris, our fellow Brit on the inside line. Norris now in his second season in Formula 1. Going to go and squeeze him out. He's trying to go the long way here around the outside line. He gets the power down, gets some good traction. He's going to keep it around the outside line. He gets forced out. He gets forced into the wall. Lando Norris just shoves us out into the wall now, and that's allowed Shumi to go through. But now we've got a puncture. We've got a puncture, and we've lost the front wing again, have we? I think the front wing's actually survived that, but now we've got a puncture on the rear. Going to try and bring it through. Now we spun! It's playing around we got because you got no traction when you got a puncture. Trying to put any sort of power, especially with this car being rear wheel drive. And then we've got to spin it around again. And now we've lost our front wing completely now. And that, uh, this race. <laughs> what I say, we only about, what, five laps into the race? And now we need to make a second pit stop now for another front wing. Hopefully we've got another, hopefully we've got a spare front wing. Uh, my Anthony even came my front wing now at this point because they're both the same spec at least. We, we got we, all the inside there of Norris, but he, we push himself to the apex. We get around the outside line, but we're, we're side by side with him. We're basically level pegging, and Norris, look, he's like he's just pushing us into the wall. We're trying to turn out of it, but there's nowhere we can go. Norris, look at he's, he, he's hardly even turning the wheel. Now he turns it and forces us into the wall, which then gives us a puncture. And I think we make contact there with Shumi as well, unfortunately for him. No, that puts us there down into last place, and with a puncture, Norris. Yeah, we have to get to the shoes of that one. Norris, what was he thinking? Punks this wall, we know we spin it down on the curving, just, just managed to stop off front wheel from actually uh, hitting the uh, the wall, because that would have definitely been a race over there and then. Managed to uh, spin the car around, but then we have a. If we go a lap down, then that is basically our race over. So, honestly, the end of that lap, we've managed to uh, crawl away back into the pits at least. And then going to be uh, another change of tyres because it's not even that time for you to go. You know, if you saw it there, the car's flashing past. We are now one lap down in this Grand Prix. And the last eight cars somehow just implode. I mean, if Norris makes cars out with everyone else like he did to me, then eight of the cars just might implode. He's going to be set of the soft tyres and another new front wing. And I'm pretty sure Alfred didn't bring any more front wings to this event. So, okay, Mag. Sorry, mate, but you're going to have to uh, try and make your front wing last for the remainder of this race. Now we're gonna come out now and we're a lap down now. We've been lapped by everyone. Now there's Shimmy is the car behind well, he's in front of us on the road, but he's behind us on the track at the moment. So we're almost a lap down to every single car in the grid. That's how far down we are, and there's literally there's there's no coming back from this now. We are literally done in just now in this race. So on to the end of lap seven. We're currently, as you un un uh, unsurprisingly, in P20. And we've got now to lap 8, we've got Hulkenberg now to sky front of us, so as the front runners, the top 10 side on the soft tyres, have now to make their pit stops now, so Hulk is a whole lap in front of us, but there he is, just right in front of us there on the track. And Shimmy's still some way behind, so I think we may make contact with Shimmy throughout all that again, so uh, the uh, Williams are looking to uh, maybe stick it out until we get to the pit stop period, so we can change onto the intermediates as we get our personal best first setter, so uh, it's still not time for the Inters yet. Definitely not with uh, saying a personal best first set, although I think this is the first time we've actually managed to set a, an actual first set where we've not been taken out of the race. And then, oh, look at that, we've got Norris there in front of us. It'd be a shame if we made contact with Norris now, wouldn't it? Uh, it's something to ruin his race, because he's actually stopped here, isn't it? That's just proving how maybe he actually has got damage from that contact now, all over the back here of Lando Norris now. And uh, let's just harass our fellow Brenda, try and go for a switchback line on him. We've got fresher tyres, we're going to make a move on Norris there. He has some front wing damage as well, so he didn't get. In this game, they're unscathed, and we make we wheel bang to this once again. So, Norris, he's got some vendetta against us. I don't exactly know what it is. Uh, we're getting on the DRS. We've got uh, we've got a faster car than that McLaren. They're gonna look for a dive up the inside line. Though. He's still gonna make it stick. And Norris actually hits for the piss. He's still squeezing us out though. So, Norris definitely got some kind of issue with us. Maybe it's because we're the better British driver. Maybe it's because we're a world champion. And if he drives like that, he's never gonna be one. I don't know. You know, it's something about the McLarens just hate me. I mean, it was Harry Anto last season. We've been just now willing to. Uh, be civil with, uh, with Harrianto. And I mean, we're being lapped now by some of the Aston Martins. I didn't quite see which one that was. And we've got one of the Rebels coming through as well. Given, well it's either going to be Stroll or uh, Perez. Given the cars they're racing, and Perez was further than that, I think we've just been lapped by Lance Stroll. Which, fair play, he's having a good race. We're having an absolute shocker. So, yeah, I don't really know what we can do about it. And uh, we're being lapped now by other cars behind. There we go, the car, they're coming out there right up behind us, uh, that's the other Alpha Tauri, but they're not quite close enough to let them pass yet. They're going to make their way through the uh, chicane, we go, oh that's a horrible slide there over the curbing, then now we're going to move to the inside, and we're going to let the, uh, the Alpha Tauri go past. Now that we're back down, no way you're trying to do, 
there's too much damage on the car, about three, four seconds slower than what it could be doing. I think it's best to just save the parts for later in the season. So yeah, as I said that on the radio, that's so our teammates in the pits, but I really couldn't care less. We can keep behind him because there's, there's no point in being out here. We've been, we've been overtaken by everyone, we've been lapped by basically the entire field. And now we're going to have to come in and that's, that's going to be it for our race. Our race done and dusted after 9 laps. And even here, now you're going to get to the finish line to start lap 10. So after 9 complete laps of the race, that's it, we're done. But back onto the live action, because of course the race is still going to be continuing, just we're just without us. We, we become the first retirement of 2020, which is not something I was expecting or obviously wanted. And then we've got the Aston Martins here in the thick of it once again. We've got one of them trying to make a move there, one of the Red Bulls. You've got uh, Perez there looking at, actually it's one of the Renaults. And now you've got Stroll having to do a, uh, a big defensive drive here from one of the uh, Mercedes. And you imagine it makes it stick, and you've got actually a bit of action further behind. Now you've got one of the Alpha Tauris now looking to go side by side with one of the Red Bulls. You've got Sergio Sotto Camera in, in his debut race in Formula One. And he's side by side with Max Verstappen, of course, on different combat tyres. Not quite sure if they've, either of them have stopped yet. And still keeping it side by side, you've got Sergio Sotto Camera around the outside line of the, of the Red Bulls. He's side by side with Max Verstappen, and he overtakes Verstappen. Sergio Sotto Camera on his Formula One debut in a car much worse than the Red Bull has just pulled Max Verstappen's pants down. Because of the wet weather, it's conditions where ideally you think Max Verstappen should shine, but no, he's been he's just been done by the Brazilian on his debut. And you saw how Sergio dominated F2 last year, where he's really uh, coming to his form now, and he's proving it right there immediately in his first race, overtaking the uh, the bigger team with their the main driver. And then we've got the uh, Aston Martin here of Lance Stroll still defending there from the Merck. And now then we've got other moves there coming from behind. Now then, as they come down the straight, you know, the, the DRS there for the Mercedes, with the Aston Martin so quick in a straight line, it might take more than DRS to pass it. Now, Russell can look to go the long way around the outside line, into the corner, he's going to make a stick, now the Aston Martin dives his way back up the inside line, and try and make it move, and makes it a stick back. Now that's going to give Sergio a set of camera a massively good run here down the start finish straight, now coming down into turn one, he's in Brazilian, close enough to make a move into turn one, not quite, just has to, just has to back out of the move there, but set of camera in his debut race in F1, He's uh, really uh, making the moves here, making his presence felt. If Kiesel, pay, if Kiesel performs like this, there's no way Red Bull can't ignore him or promote him to their, the uh, the main team sometime soon. But now then, back down to the other end of the grid. Got one of the Ferraris here behind one of the McLarens of Lando Norris, so Norris is going to take out Charles Leclerc here. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, but she better the move as Leclerc is coming into the pits. Is he, he's got some, he's on hard tyres. Maybe he's got some sort of slow puncture because he's on hard tyres. There's, there's no way he should be pitting this guy. Uh, he's going to come into the pits and he's actually going onto a set there of. Can actually quite see the tyres. Is that intermediate? Couldn't quite see from that camera angle. Either way, though, it's, if it is, it's a massive strategy gamble for Ferrari. And Ferrari never really. Uh, they aren't famed for their, their strategy gambles. But indeed, it is a set of the intermediate tyres. And I think I still can't quite see the, uh, the strategy. It is. Yeah, it is. It is. Charles Leclerc, Ferrari, uh, they pull the, the, uh, they pull the trigger and they're first to box one of their drivers to intermediate tyres. So, you know, it still looks quite dry actually. So uh, once again, Ferrari maybe looks to have shot themselves in the foot because you've still got everyone else, and I don't even think this is on the same lap. It might be the lap afterwards. Everyone else is still stayed out on the dry side. So Ferrari, they called it early. I mean, the clay was down in the back. They had to try something to be fair to them. But once again, a Ferrari strategy doesn't look to quite have actually worked out. And now all these guys are going to come into the pits now. Got the uh, Aston Martin there leading this train of cars, and then you've got Sergio Sette Camera still got behind. And actually, they're, they're coming into the pits now, so it is now the time for intermediate tyres. Because as I said, this is not the immediate lap afterwards, so it's been a lap or two at least. And you're the Ferrari's in as well, so surely this has to be at fringes. Unless well, the clerk's been lapped and they're bringing back in for drives, which is entirely possible. And now it's going to be intermediate tyres there for the Brazilian. Uh, going to be his first experience here of wet weather driving. I don't think we had a wet race in F2 last year. It's going to be first time, first race. It's going to be a baptism of fire, or well, baptism of water in this case. We have the Gustav and Alfa Tauri going out ahead there of the Aston Martin. So a free pistol or a free place gain there for the Brazilian. And here we have Charles Leclerc on the inter. He's actually come out there in front of our teammate Kevin Magnussen. So Ferrari may have pulled the trigger early, but that one lap where the uh, the time was right, the amount of time that Leclerc has managed to gain, and came there now he's got his guys working out now just to gain anything and to get back to the point because Leclerc, remember, was well, like in what second, third, last position. So. Uh, currently, K-Mass can be lacking, what, 15th or 16th position, so... 
as James Gunn is working it out. Well, then, looking back up front now, everyone will have made their pit stops. And still, unsurprisingly, it's a Toyota 1 2, with Lewis Hamilton leading the way in, in the, uh, the, the seemingly dominant Toyota car so far with his teammate Matsushita in P2 on his return to F1 racing. In P3, we have Daniel Kvyat. In P4, a bit of a surprise actually, we have the uh, the Renault here of Nico Hulkenberg, the German, who's still uh, he's had a few wins in his, in his time so far. And we've got the other Matt there, George Russell, doing well. Then we have Sergio Sete Camera in the Alpha Tauri, starting in 18th place, I think. 17th or 18th position. He's currently up here in P6, is this? He's having an absolute madness in his first race. The Brazilian Jeffrey showing his uh, skill. And then we have the Aston Martin right up behind him. The Aston Martin is so quick in a straight line, so I expect Perez might be able to just blast past Sergio sometime soon. Then we have the leader of the Ferraris, which have made their way up the order as well. So Ferrari definitely showing better race pace than what they did in qualifying. Ahead then of the uh, the Red Bulls. And then we have Jean Eric Verne in the second of the Renaults, who's uh, somewhere more around where the, uh, the Renault were, were expecting themselves to be. Then we have Leclerc in the second of the two fries. He's, he's, he's uh, interested to in be a little bit more worn, but the tyres don't really wear out, so it should make a difference. Then we've got a camera actually falling back a little bit now, so the uh, the wet weather definitely not favouring the Alfred so well. And then we have the lead of the uh, Williams there, which is still Nicholas Latifi. He's falling away a little bit still. And then right behind him, he's got, can't quite see from this camera angle. Yes, the other Alfa Tari then of Pierre Cassidy. Two Honda power cars, so they're going to be fighting out for honours. And then we have the other Aston Martin now of Lance Stroll, who's found himself way down the other. What's happened to Stroll? Do you have some kind of car issue? Maybe a problem with his pit stop. He was actually, I think, in front of Perez, so I don't know what's happened there. Okay, then you got the two McLarens down the order as well, so something must have gone wrong for McLarens as well. Maybe they're, are their pit boxes near each other? They might actually be, so they might have actually end up holding each other up in the pit stops. But someone way, way behind everyone else, Mick Schumacher, the defending world champion, He's absolutely nowhere. So I know this is a C-Spec Williams trying to fit in the engine. The engine actually talking of engines, so we've got a problem here for one of the uh, McLarens. It looks like is that a trace coming out of the car? So it looks like it's a bit more than just spray. Yes, McLaren of Lando Norris, and Norris knows he's going slowly. He is. He's pulling off. Oh, what a shame. Oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry, Lando Norris. That's such a shame to retire from this race. I mean, it's not like I know how that feels or anything. But either way, back to the live action now. We've got Verstappen, who's a Still stuck in this queue of cars behind the Ferrari. He's stuck behind cars which are faster than in a, in a straight line. And he hasn't got the DRS to make the move past, so um, it's, it's going to be a bit of a stalemate here. In the wet condition, these wet conditions are actually my favourite, the Aston Martin and the Alfa Tauri. But actually, they're going to be able to keep themselves in front as Verstappen actually has to go defensive into the chicane from Alex Albon. So Albon is, is fired up. He's, he's getting a good run here. Actually, going to try and make a move now on his teammate Max Verstappen. Albon's going to be pulled past down up first by the junior team and then by his, uh, seen, his, his junior teammate as well. And they're going to try and go around the outside line. Albon showing no fear now that he's had a season to get used to the Red Bull car. And he's just going to power his way past, is he? So I've got the inside line, that's a back out of the movement. Yeah, yeah, that's Albon go. Because Red Bull don't seem to be, I think it's not in this race, they're not in the fight for the win. So this race is about damage limitation in the, in their fight in the championship, even at this early stage, every point matters. And you've got the uh, the fight back in front. So maybe now Albon can try and make it, try and make some imprint on these cars up in front. And he's still got a pair of there, right up behind the back of Sergio Sete Camera, but Sergio seems to gain some good attraction off the corners because the, the uh, the rear of the Alpha Tower is basically it's basically a slightly simplified version of what Red Bull have, so it's gonna be quick out of the corners. But Perez is gonna be quick down the streets and he looks trying to go in the outside line here into the hairpin. And not really anywhere around there, he can make a move stick. Although he's gonna keep his fighting, so he's, yeah, he has to give him space. And there's gonna be a run now down into the uh, the wall of champion chicane. Uh, you think that Perez will have it with a straight line speed of that car, but Sergio Takam is gonna good traction out of the corner once again. Brewing the, uh, the upgrades and the, the closer relationship now with Red Bull that Alfa Tauri have is just enough to come in clutch there to keep the Brazilian ahead, but relentless pressure because Perez on his return to Formula 1, he's going to want to make, make a, his presence known as well. I guess he, especially against someone who's making their debut, Perez. He had a number of podium in his time, could have won in 2012 at Malaysia. And he got a few, a few podiums in with uh, Force India for what he was back in 2016 when he last raced in F1. And I'm back up front, he's still got the two uh, Toyota leading the way. Let's bring on to what should be, or should be soon at least, a final lap of the race. But it's still, uh, we've still got Massachusetts, he's, he's gaining on his teammate, Lewis Hamilton. 
but I don't think he's gaining by enough. So especially in wet weather as well, start of the season, there's no point playing team orders. At least, well, actually, at this point, there's one team orders of just staying behind. There's no point racing each other in the kitchen when there's no point jeopardising a one-two, which I think would only be Toyota's second one-two. I don't think they got one last year. Yeah, they got one in Mexico back in 2018. But Matsushita, he really is gaining all over the back of his teammate. But he looks like he's, he's keeping it he's keeping it civil, at least, keeping the gap at least. So I think Matsushita, given a few more laps, he would maybe have the pace to try and make a move on Hamilton. But I think he's been told to play the the, uh, the team game here. I'm sure if it was the other way around, it would be the same for Matsushita out in front as well. So. I mean, actually, he's on for his first ever podium still in Formula 1, so he's still definitely uh, going to be happy with that. And now then, to come now then round the final corner over the finish line. Coming up to the finish line, is this the final lap of the Grand Prix? I'm pretty sure it is. Is the flag of me out? It is. It is the final lap, and Lewis Hamilton wins the Canadian Grand Prix. And Massachusetts second, it is the 1 2 for Toyota at the start of this 2020 season. And if that's how they, if that's, if that's the means of how they continue to go on, then Toyota are going to look to absolutely dominate here in 2020. Hamilton and Matthew absolute class of the field. Way ahead, way, way out in front of everyone else. And they're on this corner lap as well, still keeping it civil there. And Toyota are going to be very happy. As well, yeah, with a one-two there, and new team principal Gunther Steiner as well. Taking over from Omar Staff now, he's got plenty, plenty to be happy with there. A one-two for the team. Lewis Hamilton celebrating because the first win with this new partnership taking over the Haas team. The Haas team, because some of these personnel are the Haas team, so some of them tasting victory in Formula 1 for the first time. And you know, looking at Sergio Perez P7, not quite sure if he got ahead of City Camera though in the end, but a good race still from the Mexican.